why local organization is helping to raise funds for cancer research and how it's going to aid health care in the area. We have the details as your news at 11 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJDF News Channel 6 at 11. Thank you so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with a local political group holding a rally to Death News Channel 6. A development in the shooting investigation that happened in Richmond County Friday evening. Investigators found the victims were shot on Windsor Spring Road on the 4200 block. The two people injured drove from the location to the Walmart on, one, on Windsor Spring Road where deputies found both of them with at least one gunshot wound. The victims were then taken to the hospital for their injuries. And in Barnwell County, we now know the identity of the driver who died in a car accident Friday evening. The coroner has identified the driver to be 21-year-old Bryce Tolliver. Authorities say Tolliver went off-road on Patterson Mill Road near Cashew Drive. He then hit an embankment, overturned, and hit several trees. Tolliver was taken to the hospital where he died from his injuries. And it's time now to take a look at our weather with Chief Meteorologist Tim Miller. Tim, can we expect another pretty chilly morning? Uh, somewhat. Yeah, Hannah's right, though. We we're talking about some of these temperatures. We look at that. We started out at 52 degrees this morning. 52. The average is 65, but our high today was a lovely 84. 84 for the first day of June when we should be close to 90. We'll take that any old day for sure. Uh, I think it's going to be okay for us tonight. Notice we're at 72 degrees at 11 o'clock, so I'm really not thinking we're going to get down to the low 50s. Certainly, we'll certainly hover perhaps around 60 tomorrow morning, but at those low 50s, I think are pretty much done with. One of the reasons is we're dealing with that southeast wind now, right? And that southeast wind is still rather brisk, even this hour at night, so about 9, 10 miles per hour. I don't see it really dying down too much. Relative humidity high, of course, because it typically is at this hour of the night. Notice the cloud cover. Cloud cover is also going to keep us a little warmer, acts like a blanket, if you will. So, again, clearing the skies, we'd have a little bit more opportunities of some um, of cooler temperatures. This is also showing some showers that have popped up. I'm really not that surprised. No fire in Viper 6 in our next uh, go-round here. But, again, these little showers should die out. If, indeed, they are dying out, certainly no thunderstorms. So we have enough atmospheric moisture to produce some showers, and that's going to be the key for tomorrow as well. So as we go through the early morning hours, notice you don't see any 50s on this map. We're pretty much done with that. Notice that we're into the mid-70s with clouds by tomorrow morning. So tonight I'm going to do around 60 degrees. That may be pushing it, so we may do between 63, 64 degrees. But I think with the cloudy skies, we had some clearing. We could have a little low, cooler temperatures. But notice I have the shower and storm icon in the mix as we get to the afternoon time. That's going to be pretty important because I do think we'll have some opportunity of storms. And that's going to take us through the rest of the week, which we will talk about in full detail coming up with your forecast in just a few minutes, Hannah. Tim, thanks. A big day for a local organization dedicated to the fight against cancer. PaceLine is an organization that raises funds for cancer research. All proceeds go to the Georgia Cancer Center, and today it held a kickoff celebration at Savannah River Brewing Company for its signature event, the annual Pace Day Bike Ride, coming up in October. They also held a training ride to help those that want to get involved start getting ready for the big day. We've got so many just sort of first-time riders is don't be intimidated by it you know we've got a, a 10 mile ride this morning and a 30 mile ride and, and the idea of gosh i can't do 10 miles you know get on a bike just remember when you're a kid and it's it's not a race it's low key it's really about gathering with like-minded people and trying to make a difference in the community right and Pace Day will be October 13th, and they'll also be partnering with Cycle Bar in Evans. We will have all of the information on how you can get involved at WJBF.com. Major milestones and lives saved were celebrated in Aiken today. The nonprofit organization Friends of the Animal Shelter, better known as FOTUS, celebrated its 15th anniversary with an adoption event today at the Aiken County Animal Shelter. It was founded in 2009 with the goal of helping to save the lives of adoptable pets at the shelter. Organizers tell us that in that time, Aiken County has gone from euthanizing 90% of animals at the shelter to finding a home for every every single adoptable pet over the last six years. Uh, it means a lot to me, actually. Um, I went to the old shelter. I sometimes tear up talking about it, but they showed me 10 puppies, and they said, which puppy 
continues to see dozens of new animals arrive every week to see adoptable pets and a list of the major milestones celebrated by FOTUS today. Just go to WJBF.com and click on this story. And today is the beginning of Pride Month and the city of Charleston kicked off the month with a pride parade. Hundreds of people were lying in the streets and Sophia Redenbaugh was there. With waving flags and lots of smiles, Charleston kicked off Pride Month this morning. I just love coming to Pride to see the celebration and just the happiness here on the street. It's, it's a really nice thing to see. It was the 15th annual Pride Parade. Tons of people walked the parade as well as watched on the side of the streets. Spectators say it brought them a feeling of unity. I've come a few years in a row now, um, and I think my favorite thing is just seeing everyone who comes out, because it can feel really isolating to be a gay person in the South, honestly. Laura Cordell came with her wife of five years on Saturday, and their message is love for everyone, saying it's a time to celebrate diversity and equal rights. We're not here to hate, we're here to love. We just want to love everyone. Both of them saying during Pride Month, it's their hope that people learn acceptance. Everybody needs to be accepted from children to us to um, people like the veteran that I take care of here that's 75 years old. It's all acceptable. Later in the month, the Garden City will be celebrating their pride. Beats on Rod will take place in the heart of downtown Augusta at the Augusta Common on June 21st. And the Augusta Pride Parade and Festival will happen on June 22nd. Hurricane season is here, and according to NOAA, we're expecting a well above average 17 to 25 main storms, 8 to 13 of which could be hurricanes, and 4 to 7 major hurricanes. This is June 1st through November 30th. Sunsets, energy is gone. 
Monday morning, we start off nice, but by Monday afternoon, more scattered showers and thunderstorms will start to develop. Uh, and that's going to be the case pretty much all the way through early part of next week as we develop with these showers and storms. And the clicker has gone south like the wind. So you're going to have to pardon me. I'm not going to be on camera. I'm just going to go over to the main uh, computer here and just press the button. So there you have it. There is a Monday. Notice showers and storms end by 11 o'clock. And we'll do the same for next week. Let's look at future cast. This is tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Notice we're fine when these little showers start to pop up, especially by afternoon time <clears throat> through the evening. These little scattered showers and storms will come and go. And then notice by 11 o'clock, we're pretty much done with it. Next week, pretty much the same thing. Isolated afternoon showers and thunderstorms. And a rain chance of 30% pretty much all the way through the week. Notice temperatures will hold pretty much on par with about 89 degrees. That's our average high. That's pretty much where we'll be. Tonight, we'll see an overnight low of 60 degrees to mid-60s. are mostly cloudy skies. Any showers ending certainly in the next few hours. Tomorrow, late day showers and thunderstorms with a high temperature of 86 degrees. And our 10-day Viper Alert forecast brings those shower and storm chances into focus for pretty much every day uh, next week. It won't be a washout, but just those late afternoon showers and thunderstorms. Yeah, Tim, and gone south like the wind was a good one. We're going to have to get that clicker looked at. I know, we will. What's going on Look with it? The clicker folks. We had to <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Tim. And coming up, we are remembering D-Day 80 years later. It's the third round of the RBC Canadian Open, and the Clemson Tigers are taking on Coastal Carolina in the NCAA Baseball Tournament. Kira Goldstein has sports next. How do you become love? You're a mom. GDF sports coverage you can count on. Very special day for future ballers in the area as the annual CODA's Kids Football Camp took place at South Aiken. Dozens of kids, ranging from elementary to high school, gathered at the South Aiken football field for a football and cheerleading camp hosted by the CODA's Kids Foundation. On the football side, the kids were put through drills and exercises to focus on fundamentals, but they also had quite a bit of fun doing it. And then on the cheerleading side, the focus was mainly stunts and the foundations of cheer. Event organizer and founder of CODA's Kids, Dakota Watson, said it was so much fun getting to see his foundation helping kids, but that he could not do it without the support from his community. So as CODA's Kids started back in 2010, it was just something that I really wanted to do as far as my foundation was concerned. And uh, the idea came in 2010 and actually started in 2011. Since then, we were given, given a number of scholarships here in the CSRA. Um, we also provided a great deal of opportunities for less fortunate kids. And uh, again, we're bringing back the football program here. Um, we got a number of guys that's been working with me ever since I first started from best friends from high school, from best friends from college, and then also inspiration that I got to Florida State University was Jamal Reynolds. So they out here showing love and showing support. Dakota says he's planning many more events. You can find all that info on CODA's Kids social media pages as well as CODA'sKids.com. Meanwhile, in the NCAA baseball tournament, regional matchups continued starting with Clemson. Their defense was outstanding against Coastal Carolina, but so was their offense. Top of the seventh, game tied at two with two on for Cam Canarella. He'll send it right up the middle for a base hit. That would give Clemson the lead. They'd hold that lead through nine and manage to get the win four to three. They'll stay in the winner's bracket. Next matchup for them is on Sunday night. Meanwhile, in the Athens Regional, Georgia took on UNC Wilmington. Bottom of the first, no score. Corey Collins will send it out of the park, and Georgia gets on the board first, one to nothing. Then, in the bottom of the second, with the bases loaded for Colby Branch. Here's the pitch. That one's gone. A grand slam for Georgia would extend their lead five to one, and it's only the second inning. Bulldog bats stayed hot all night. With two on for Branch again, he hits it to third. The ball is then overthrown at first. The runs just keep on coming for Georgia. They beat UNCW soundly 11-2. to They'll be back on Foley Field on Sunday night. And in the Raleigh Regional, South Carolina took on NC State, trailing by one. A homer from Will Tippett would tie it up. He's been a star all weekend. Then in the fifth, SC down by two. Another homer, this one by Dylan Brewer. That will cut the deficit to two, but he's not quite done because in the seventh, he would do it again. Brewer ties the game at four with a 
who run shot exceptional at bats from him, but unfortunately it wouldn't be enough. NC State would tack on two and get the win six to four, so the Gamecocks drop into an elimination game against James Madison on Sunday at noon. Over in the MLB, the Atlanta Braves earned a big win on Friday, and they look to take the series as they hosted the Oakland A's on Saturday. It was a pretty back-and-forth game for the first few innings, but in the bottom of the fifth, Braves trailing 8-6. to six. Runner on first for Matt Olson. He crushes a sinker to right field for a two-run homer. That's his ninth of the season. Braves would go on to take a 9-8 to eight lead. Top of the sixth, same score. Runners on the corners for Rooker. He smacks a double off the right field wall, which brings in two runs. The Athletics retake the lead 10-9. to nine. Then in the top of the ninth, Braves trailing to 11 to 9, tying run at the plate. Duvall crushes a slider to left. It looks like it's going to be a homer, but it's foul. Duvall just missed a game tying homer, and on the very next pitch, he watches a slider right down the middle. A's get the win 11 to 9. Rubber match on Sunday is at 135. And finally, out on the links, it was moving day at the RBC Canadian Open. With a late push, Robert McIntyre shot into the lead at 14 under, four strokes ahead of Griffin Hughes and former leader Ryan Fox. And finally, former Georgia Bulldog Keith Mitchell is tied for 15th at 6 under, still in the hunt with one final round on Sunday. Anything can happen, and we'll make sure to keep you updated on the 2024 RBC Canadian Open. That does it for sports. From scheduling your floor, please go to Parkinson.org or call 1-800-4PD-INFO. The Parkinson's Foundation. Better lives together. Getting harassed here about making sure there's sunshine when we see a lot of showers. Yeah, these are the, yeah, these are the afternoon variety showers, uh, y'all. Uh, temperatures around 90 degrees, just late day afternoon, scattered showers and storms. Typical June forecast. Absolutely. Well, that's all that we have for tonight. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to tune in tomorrow morning for Good Morning Justin. Have a good night.